Hey there guys and welcome to the introduction of a new series for the channel, Maho Profile, A History of Magical Girls. I love magical girls. I have always loved magical girls. Be they cute and frilly, dark and subversive, or somewhere in between. I love stories that spotlight powerful young women without necessarily demanding that they be more masculine to be seen as strong. <clears throat> Not that I don't love me some of the more masculine or androgynous magical girls as well. <sighs> anyway, for a while now, I have wanted to do something akin to The Idols of Anime, which is a series produced by my good friend and colleague Vega. That series looks at the history of idol anime, one or two shows at a time, giving fun reviews and also talking about the history of the industry and pop culture around the shows. And that's essentially what I'd like to do for Magical Girls. A series looking at the history of every Magical Girl anime ever created. In order. Every Magical Girl. Everyone. What do you mean everyone? EVERYONE! The goal will be to get a better understanding of where this style of anime began, how it's evolved, and why it's still so popular today. Before I can do that, though, I'm going to have to first define what I mean by Magical Girl. So, for the purposes of Maho Profile, a Magical Girl or Maho Shoujo anime is any animated TV series, movie, OVA, short film, or web series created in Japan for a primarily Japanese audience where the protagonist is a girl or young woman with magical powers, or at least superhuman abilities that appear magical. Furthermore, this girl's magic must be significant within the world of the story, usually shown through a contrast of magic and the mundane. That seems like a pretty broad definition, and yeah, it is. A lot of titles are regarded as magical girl anime, and they're all very different from each other, with the only key threads being, well, magic plus girl plus anime. So those are the only hard and fast requirements I'm going to use for this series. That said, if you are new to the genre and not sure what to expect, here are a few other traits that are common to many, but not all, magical girl stories. <clears throat> the heroine may have one or more magical allies or teammates. These allies can be humans, animals, fairies, plush toys, robots, dinosaurs, and various other fantastical beings. The heroine may use special items to perform her magic. Such items include wands, lockets, bracelets, compacts, pens, soul-stealing Fabergé eggs, and other highly marketable paraphernalia. Special magic phrases to perform spells, attacks, or transformations are often used. Speaking of transformations, many magical girl anime feature the heroine turning into an alter ego of some sort, be it an older version of herself, a transformative disguise, an alternate persona with different abilities, or a super-powered fighter in a cute outfit. Sometimes there are teams of magical girls, mainly appearing in the Sailor Moon era and onward. These teams are often color-coded and share a common design theme or motif in their outfits, as well as themed hero names, attacks, and transformations. In longer series, there will often be Problem of the Day or Monster of the Day episodes, featuring threats or issues that are both introduced and resolved within a single episode, and then rarely, if ever, mentioned again. Hey, gotta fill out a season somehow. And lastly, many Magical Girl stories explore a range of similar themes, including but not limited to the importance of strong female friendships, empowerment through femininity, love and community as sources of power, the fantasy of temporary adulthood, societal perceptions of girls versus women, explorations of gender identity and sexuality, witches and how society treats them, dealing with mortality and death, making sacrifices for the greater good, learning to become a better person, the importance of helping those around you however you can, and of course, SOLVING YOUR PROBLEMS WITH LASERS! Also, BUY OUR TOYS! So yeah, there are a lot of things a Magical Girl show can be. However, there are a few things you'd think might count as Magical Girl, which I won't be covering for the series. 
I have to draw my limit somewhere or else my already long list of shows would become near infinite. So again, for the purposes of this series, here is what we won't be talking about. Number one, magical girlfriend shows. These shows feature magical girls for sure, and they may even be the main selling point of their respective titles. But it still stands that a girl in a show like this is not the protagonist. She is the girlfriend or love interest of the actual protagonist, hence the name Magical Girlfriend. For this series, I want to focus on works where magical girls are the stars of their own stories, full stop. That's not a quality judgment. Again, this is just a way to narrow the field of what we're talking about. Number two, high fantasy shows, mostly. Plenty of fantasy shows with female protagonists who use magic exist. However, in these high fantasy worlds, magic is often a more commonplace thing than it would be in a story set on Earth. If magic is commonplace, or at least not unheard of, in the world of the fiction, then a girl having magic powers is likely to not raise as many eyebrows, ergo her powers may not be that significant to the narrative, or at least not more significant than the setting itself. Exceptions to this rule would be shows like Magic Knight Ray Earth, where the show takes place in a fantasy world, but the protagonists are regular high school students from Earth, which makes their gaining of magic powers significant to the story. There's some borderline cases like Little Witch Academia, Kill la Kill, and Akatsuki Cha Cha, but we'll cover them in more detail when we get to them. Number three, international productions. This includes shows like Winx Club, Lolly Rock, Miraculous Ladybug, Star vs. the Forces of Evil, Steven Universe, and so on. Regardless of the quality of these shows or how interesting they might be to discuss, I want to limit the scope of this series to Japanese media only. This is mostly a practicality thing. If I open up the series to international media, my definition of Magical Girl would bring in a lot of other titles. Gem and the Holograms, Rainbow Bright, Sabrina the Teenage Witch, Powerpuff Girls, BB Bloxburg, Atomic Betty, Rainbow Ruby, DC Superhero Girls, Cinderella, Tangled, Frozen Moana, and more! Whew, which, again, are all great. But that much material would get very unmanageable for me. Plus, then it would take even longer to get to the biggest smash hits of the genre, like Sailor Moon and Madoka Magica. As well, the Japanese magical girl genre has so much specific history and cultural context behind it, that I feel focusing on them exclusively is warranted in this case. That said, I am a fan of some of these shows, including Steven Universe, and I've really been meaning to watch Star vs. the Forces of Evil as well. So if there is enough demand for me to cover international productions, or other stuff that might not totally fit the show's criteria, I may add a Patreon goal for side episodes covering these shows in the future. So if you want to hear me talk about more types of related shows, let me know in the comments and tell me that you would be willing to donate to make that happen. And lastly, number four, hentai. Yes, there are magical girl hentai. No, I will not be covering them, not even as bonus episodes. Not due to prudishness, more due to YouTube's content guidelines. Well, that and also because the history and evolution of hentai would require its own gigantic pile of research in addition to all the research I'm already doing, so... <sighs> no. No, no, no. I'm not covering that stuff. Sorry to say. I know, you're super disappointed, I can tell. <laughs> Alright, I think that about does it. Join me next time for our first profile covering some of the earliest ancestors of modern magical girls. Look forward to it, and if you liked this introduction and are excited to see more, please consider supporting my work on Patreon or donating via Ko-fi or PayPal. I would love to make YouTube a staple part of my career, and even a dollar a month or a small one-time donation helps a lot when enough people do it. Either way, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time for episode one of Maho Profile. Thanks so much again to all my patrons who support me every month, especially Author X, Lavitz, and Otaku no Podcast. I wouldn't be doing this if not for the generous support of viewers like you. You can become my patron for as little as a dollar a month at patreon.com slash Aaron Cerise. You can buy me a coffee at ko-fi.com slash Aaron Cerise. Or you can always share this video and leave a like or comment to show your support. Thanks so much again and have a good day! Goodbye! <laughs>